Um, amen. Who's blessed this morning? Amen. Who's blessed this morning? Amen. 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 That's all right. It's okay. It's okay to be the only person screaming if you have to. Because you're screaming for God. You're not screaming for everybody else. So when, when I ask you who are blessed, everybody used to be somebody jumping up, doing flips down the aisle and all kinds of stuff. And then when we call Brother Dennis to get you off the ground, that'd be a whole other story. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I don't know where we're going with that. Uh, okay, so the name of the message today is the heart of true praise. That's the name of the message today. That's what we want to talk about this morning, uh, the heart of true praise. I want you to turn in your Bibles to Psalms. Uh, that's the incorrect script. We're going to turn in your Bibles to Psalms. Psalms uh, 150. Psalms 150. Um, and we want to um, go into that because that's what we're going to be talking about. Uh, we'll be reading from the, the poetry. The, the, the book of Psalms is, is built on poetry and songs, if you don't know it. Uh, it's built on poetry and songs. It's, um, it consists of songs of poetry from various, uh, various writers. Um, the, the different words in the Bible, uh, what we're talking about today is praise, and the different words in the Bible to translate the word praise, um, there are you know, several. Uh, one of the Hebrew words is zamar, Z-A-M-A-R. I want you to write that down, zamar, which translates to sing praise, which we were just doing. We were singing praises to God. And so when you sing thanks to God, um, you are performing zamar praise. Every time you praise the Lord, every time you lift your hands to God and, and sing praise to God, you are performing Zamar praise. Anybody ever done Zamar praise? Amen? Amen. Anybody ever done Zamar praise in your car? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You, you know what I'm talking about. When nobody's looking at you and you sing, you're like, thank you. That's my song, girl. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know. And so Zamar praise is performing praise to God. Performing Zamar praise is performing singing praise to God. Another Hebrew word is yada, yada, which means to give thanks or confess. And so when we confess thanks to God, when we confess thanks to God and tell him how much we love him, how much we appreciate him, we are performing yada praise. And so um, Psalm 150 is what we're reading from this morning. Psalm 150. Um, the main scripture that uh, we are reading, the verse begins with praise the Lord in our English Bibles. It begins with praise the Lord. And that is a uh, translation of the, the word, the Hebrew word for hallelujah. So when we say hallelujah, we're saying praise the the Lord, hallelujah, yah, meaning God, yah, so when we say yah, we say, well, the word, you've heard the word yah, you've heard the word Yahweh, Yahweh is God, and so when we're talking about hallelujah, some people say hallelujah, they're saying God, hallelujah, God, praise the Lord, and so every time you say that, you're saying praise the Lord, how many people gonna say hallelujah more, Every day, you just mean hallelujah, thank, praise the Lord, because every time you're saying it, you're saying praise the Lord. And so the word praise means uh, several things. It means to express approval. Uh, means to express approval of, it means to boast, to admire, to appreciate, to thank. And so hallelujah, when we're saying hallelujah, we're saying uh, praise be to God. We're saying approval be to God, admiration be to God, appreciation be to God, thanks be to God. And so every time you say hallelujah, you're saying a bundle of stuff. You're saying praise to God. I thank you, God. I admire you. I appreciate you, Lord, for all that you've done in my life. So why is it important is what we're talking about today. Why is it important to give all true praises unto the Lord? Because what we don't, what we fail to understand is because of sin, we are naturally trained to praise someone or someone or something else that was never equipped or worthy to be the main deserving source of praise. We have all been trained to do that in this world, to give honor and glory and praise to something else that can't hold the foundation that God holds up for us every single day. 
Watch how we do this sometimes. Uh, when you are hired at a job, what do you do? You thank the person. You, you thank the person who says you are hired. You say, if you've been trying to get a job for so long and you couldn't get that job and, and you've been pushing and pushing and pushing. I remember when I first got hired at the job I got hired at 25 years ago. I remember uh, thanking everybody, the person who introduced me, who said, man, you should come up here and do this. You should come up here and do this. I, 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 I wasn't old enough at the time. I thanked that person. I thanked the person who, I, who, who, who said, you are hired. I was like, I am? Yes, you are hired. So I thanked that person. And I, I gave all, I gave praises to people who can hold the foundation of the real reason I got hired. And so for us as Christians, it's important that we learn how to, what to truly praise and how, uh, who to truly praise. When you are hungry and a co-worker uh, brings some extra food to work and you remember that you didn't have money, you didn't have money that day, you were just going to settle and eat whatever, and then that extra, that person comes to work and brings that extra food and, and you say, I don't know, thank you! Thank you for bringing that food! Uh, and they offer it to you. Sometimes we give people praise instead of giving the true person praise. And I'm not saying you shouldn't thank people, but I'm saying there's a way we have to thank people. We have to learn how to honor the true source, the true source of why we have what we have on a day-to-day -day basis. A doctor, you know, we have a doctor, um, you have a doctor who, who uh, locates the source of your illness locates the source of your illness and treats the treats a person back to good health. What do we say? We say, thank you, Doc. Some of us have said, or some people have said before, Doc, I don't know what I would have done without you. Some of us say that in relationships. When we have that person who's in our life, who we love. Anybody ever had that person who you truly love in the world? You, you, you look at that person, you say, I don't know what I would do without you. Well, you're praising that person. And the problem with that is that person doesn't have the qualifications to keep that comment or keep you grounded where you need to be. That, 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 that doctor or that person that we deal with or that friend who brings food or uh, whoever helps you out in any situation, they don't have the foundation to hold you for the rest of your life. But sometimes we give people more praise than we do the, the true foundation, the true source. And I say that because I'm talking about every one of us in here who have done that a time or two in our lives. We tell people, man, that was perfect timing. I, don't, I didn't have any money. I didn't know how I was going to do this. And we give that person praise. We tell the person, I don't know what I would do without you. We give that person praise. We get in bad relationships. And because we don't know the Lord, people tell people, I don't know what I would do without you. I can't live without you. Anybody ever heard that before? That's such a dangerous statement. That's why you see people getting killed out there. Because folks have the wrong praise or the wrong, they lift people up to a pedestal that nobody else can stand on but God. And it's dangerous. So we, as humans, typically direct our complete praise to some who are lesser sources than God. And we forget the true source that really deserves all praises in all glory. And so, like I said, I'm not telling any of us to not say thank you to people, but learn how to do it right. Learn how to give true honor and true praise to the one who deserves it. God gave me Psalms 150 because it completes uh, the reasons as to why uh, to praise God. And so I want to read verse 1. Verse 1 says this, Praise the Lord which is also hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. In the Old Testament, the holiest place in the temple was the sanctuary. The holiest place in the temple was the sanctuary. And so um, the most sacred place was the sanctuary. That was the place where God was, where the presence of the Lord was, where you had to be respectful in that place. And, 
So now we're in the, uh, the New Age Christian Church. And sometimes we think of the sanctuary being the front of the room. But I want to correct you on something as far as the sanctuary, what the sanctuary is. The true sanctuary is in any church. It's not just in a church. It's everywhere you may go. Because the holiest place in a church where the Holy Spirit dwells at is in every seat, in every person who believes in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's holy ground. Not because of you, but because of God. And so if, if, if the Old Testament uh, folks would come into this place spiritually grounded, they would look at one person, they would look at you and say, well, there's a spirit right there. Man, man the spirit's right here too. The spirit's right here, the spirit's here and here and here. The, this whole room is holy. Why? Because every one of us who believes that Jesus Christ in, is the Lord has that same Holy Spirit that they yearned for, that they waited for, that they desired. You have that spirit dwelling in your belly right now, and it will not leave you, making you holy because of God. Amen. Do you understand what you contain? You contain that Holy Spirit, which makes the sanctuary, the sanctuary can be your bathroom at home. The sanctuary can be your living room floor, can be your kitchen. Wherever you decide to drop and honor and give God praise, glory, it can be in your car sitting down just thanking Jesus for all that he has done. It can be raising your hands in the middle of a meeting that has become the holy ground of God. So the sanctuary is everywhere you go in the spirit of God. That's an amazing thing. And so, um, spirit of the living God resides in you because we believe in Jesus Christ. Let's read verse two. Verse two says this, praise him for his acts of power. Praise him for surpassing, for surpassing greatness. God is all powerful. God is, has all authority. Nothing that has happened has happened without him. Do you understand? Nothing. There is no thing that has happened that can happen without God's power. God has to give power to any and everything that has power. There is no power that is without God. Now, what did Jesus say again? I mean, what did they say about Jesus and John? John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It goes further to say that all things that exist, exist because of Him. All power, all authority, all angels, even the, the angels that rejected God, they, their power exists because of God. Your ability to stand is because of God. Your ability to breathe is because of God. The reason you can see is because of God. When you walk, it's because of God. When you are able to stay on the ground because of the, the, the world, uh, the world's axis allowing us to be grounded because of gravity. Gravity is because of God. When you understand that all is because of God, you have access to a kingdom that others don't have access to and it resides in you. We get lost in all the trials and tribulations instead of getting lost in God more. Some of us need to learn to get lost in God. You have access to the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. We talked about cancer this morning. Cancer has to submit to the name of Jesus Christ. Death has to submit to the name of Jesus Christ. Life submits to the name of Jesus Christ. Trials and tribulations submit to the name of Jesus Christ. All authority, all praise is due to him. He has all power and all authority. And as believers, sometimes we fail to understand that God doesn't owe us anything else on earth. Do you understand? He does not owe us anything else. He doesn't have to say another word to us. 
He doesn't have to uh, mention anything to us. He can snatch all the Bibles from us. He can take everything out of our lives. We don't owe, he don't owe us anything. He doesn't owe us an explanation of why we are here. So everything we receive is unmerited favor. It's unearned. There's nothing you can do for it. The salvation life, the, the, the fact that you have salvation, you are saved and full of the Holy Spirit, is unearned. There's nothing you can do to repay God back. There's nothing you do, you've do done to receive it. So verse 3 through 5 says this. Praise him with the sounding of the trumpet. Praise him with the harp and the, the lyre. Praise him with the timbrel and dancing. Praise him with the song uh, with the strings and pipe. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with the resounding cymbals. Oh my gosh, he's the, the, the this person who, who wrote this is is basically telling us praise him in everything. Yes. Everything you do, praise God. We do not deserve to know God. Do you understand that? We do not deserve to know God, but he allows us to know him through the works of his son. He didn't have to do that. He doesn't know us anything. He doesn't know us responses to anything. He doesn't owe us anything. God is not indebted to anybody. Do you, do we get it today, family? God is not indebted to anybody. He doesn't have like a credit report that he checks on. He, does, he doesn't owe anything to anybody. In, in, in anything we want, he doesn't know what to give to us, but he keeps on providing his love. We, he doesn't even know his love, but he gives it to us. We don't deserve his love, but he applies it to our lives. He allows us to experience it. We don't deserve to know about him, his son, and the Holy Spirit. But he allows us to know about it. Created beings don't have the right to demand that the creator explains why we are here. None of us do. God, why don't you tell me why I'm here? I need to know why I'm here. <laughs> we don't have the right to ask him of that. He, he, do you remember one person who, who, who talked to God as if he was an equal at one time and, and, and demanded or told God to do certain things? I, you know, what you, you know, why don't you just take me? Why don't you just, you know, why don't you just take my life? Why don't you, the person who was experiencing boils on their body, who was experiencing challenges in their lives, who had family members who died, who had their, their money taken down. Does anybody remember that, Joe? Yeah. Yeah. And I remember the first time I read that, and I'm, you know, in my younger, a uh, 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 short time ago, in my younger age, okay, so it was a long time ago, um, was reading that, and I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, I hope God doesn't respond back to him. <laughs> and then I looked at the next page, I kind of peeked ahead, I'm like, whoo, 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 he's going to respond, and it went on for like three pages. If you had the book I had, it went over three pages and God just went on saying, where were you when I did this? Where were you? It's, it's like, it's like when he could have just put in three words or three or four words that you have the nerves. <laughs> you know what I'm mean? saying? You have the nerves to ask. He's God. He's all knowing. He created you because he wanted to. He, he can do whatever he wants to. We don't have the right to ask the creator and, and noblize God, you need to tell me why, why I'm doing this, why I'm experiencing that, why I'm going through these trials in my life, why my finances are challenged, why my children have problems, why I have problems with my job, why I have problems with, with, with all this other stuff in my life. God, God doesn't owe you an answer, but he gives it to you through his son. And that's the beautifulness of what we experience. Because the creator does not have to talk to the created, but he does. He does not have to give us his spirit, but he does. That spirit gives us hope that what we do not see is. 
Th there's no way 2,000 years later, if we did not have a Holy Spirit in us, that we would all be saying, praise the Lord, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, for all the stuff you've done. He's given us something to remind us that he exists. And so our Father loves us enough not only to explain it, but he explains it in detail. Verse 6 sums it up. The psalmist sums it up by saying, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. And then he goes further with praise the Lord or hallelujah. Everything should be praising God. Everything. The word says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Everything will eventually confess that God is God. But everything should be confessing that God is God now. But they don't because of sin. And so God leaves that special privilege of being able to know who he is, of being able to praise him, that privilege of true following him, true believing in him, true understanding that he exists. He leaves that to the followers of his son, Jesus Christ. And so what does that mean? It means that all of us in here get the privilege of being able to praise God. We get the opportunity of being able to come to his services. We get the blessing of knowing that he exists. We get the opportunity of knowing that he is with us and he'll never leave us nor forsake us. We get the opportunity of him sharing his son with us and the works of his mighty son. We get the opportunity of knowing that the Holy Spirit dwells in us and it does works in us. We don't even know it does. We get the opportunity to know that. Some of us think we're entitled. <laughs> we're not. We get opportunity to know who Jesus Christ is. And so it says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. But only ones who truly praise God is the one who he shares himself with. And so Every opportunity you, you get to praise God, to praise the Lord, to say praise God or praise the Lord, you should do it knowing that God has installed in you the ability to be able to know that all praise, glory, and honor is due to him. That's why you're doing it. He has given you that ability to know that he is God and he is due the praises of his people. And so when you say praise the Lord, you don't just say it, you mean it when you say it. You say, I thank you for everything. I need everybody in here who has breath to say it real loud. Say, praise the Lord. Praise, praise the, the Lord. Lord. Amen. I need everybody who has breath in here to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. That's how we do it. We need you to learn the heart of true praise. And when you learn and understand the true heart of praise, that the favor you receive in this world, and more importantly in heaven, is all due to the source of grace, the source of all grace, which is unearned favor. All the stuff that you have coming for you in eternity that you don't know about, that you'll be so excited. We'll be in eternity saying, oh my God, Sandy, this is awesome. The brother Dennis, this is awesome. Tommy, do you see what's going on? Do you know how we're going to be praying? We don't even understand. We can't even scratch the surface of what God is going to do for us and what he's already done for us. They're going to have to wake me up, uh, me and my wife up a few times. Honey, look. <laughs> Darlene, look. Ooh. Can you imagine how we're going to be yes. on that day? We can't even imagine because it says to be out of the body and be present with God. Sometimes we worry about the death instead of about the life. Mm -hmm. We focus on what we lost instead of what we gained. We've gained the source of all authority, all power, all principalities, everything. He is the source of everything, and he's in your heart. And we worry about bills. Now, can you help me with my debt? Can you help me with my rent? Can you help me with this child? Instead of thanking you, Lord, I thank you for whatever your plan is, but I give you all honor and all glory. I thank 
you for being my God. Thank you, Lord. Do you have the access to the Holy of Holies within you? The person who was excited about being hired on the job should have been excited because of the source who knew that no one would hire that person without his help. When you understand the source of all the things you receive, all the glory and all the honor that resides in giving you what you need, you'll learn to praise God more. You're no longer a crying man or a person. Have you ever seen somebody do something so special for you? Like, thank you very much for coming through. Anybody ever said that before? We all done that before. Thank you. No, 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 no. Don't thank your pastor. Uh, thank him moderately. But give all honor and all praise and all glory to God. Amen. Don't thank your friend. Thank him moderately. But give all honor. Scream out praise. Fall on your face. Let all your tears come out to God. He is the reason that you have everything that you have from the shoes on your feet to the hair on your head that I lack. We'll get that later. <laughs> you can see that. <laughs> or not see that. <laughs> uh, you no longer cry to a person. You cry to the true source of all your favor and all of your praise and the glory is given to God. When you do that, when you praise who really needs to be praised, when you give all honor and glory to who needs to be honored and glorified, do you realize that that is spiritual? When you do that, that's spiritual. Your praise is heavenly. It's eternal. It does not end. But when you praise a person, that's temporary. That's why, you know, the Lord has enabled me not to get overly excited in football games, basketball games, all that other stuff. I don't get excited about that before. I, I'm telling you, <laughs> long time ago, when I, when, you know, back in the 90s with the Cowboys, I'm talking about the Cowboys, you might close your ears for a little bit. Um, but back in the days when, when the Cowboys uh, were winning, <laughs> um, there was a game that I was watching that the Lord just reminded me of. I was watching at my house with my with a, with a uh, pizza, her pizza. Had the whole pizza. Didn't have nobody else with me, so I was eating the whole pizza. Just want to let you know, it was a long time ago. I was single. I was green. <laughs> want you to praise the Lord, right? <laughs> so, so I, I was doing that, and I was watching the game in first quarter. They were playing San Francisco 49ers, uh, and it was an important game. First quarter, it was turnovers and all kind of stuff, just running through. Jerry Rice was running all over us and all kind of things was happening. I remember getting so mad in my own place, I threw my pizza across the room. Oh, what? Yeah! I threw my pizza. I was, ah! <laughs> and uh, you know, I, I, the Lord reminded me of that right now because I was so caught up into praising man Lifting up man, worried about my team, my this, my that. That it, it bothered me down to where I was I was willing to throw. Oh, Y'all know me, I don't throw food. Uh -uh. <laughs> Ain't done it since then. But the, the thing was, my praise was somewhere else. It wasn't where it needed to be. Man, it, now it, to me, just watching football or basketball, so it's just like games to me. I don't even get that emotional over it no more because it's a game to me. I'm more concerned about what my Lord thinks in life, what he wants for me tomorrow, to, today, or whatever. I'm more concerned about that. There's, I wouldn't drop a pepperoni for a team now. <laughs> wouldn't. Just, it's a, and I looked at that, thinking about it. I was watching it last night, and I'm sitting there thinking, man, I don't even get emotionally caught into games anymore. I just love God. And I honor Him. And I worship Him. And so when you understand and God starts to do that magnificent change in you, you begin to know that He's with you. You realize 
that everything that you receive is because of him. And so, you know, we went into the, the person who was hired on the job, uh, giving all honor and praise to God, the, the, the person who, you know, you think about the person who brings that person food, uh, who brought food to work that day or whatever, uh, when that person didn't have money or whatever. Um, when you get intricate and you get intimate with the Lord, you begin to understand that the Lord is watching over his child so much that he knew that the child would not have money on that day. So not only did he use somebody else to prepare food, extra food, that portion that he had separated for his child, he made that person bring that food to work and offer it to his child. Do you understand that the Lord provides for you. And so when you're so caught up in God and somebody brings something, I just had some extra food today. You don't even look, you say thank you, and then you say, oh my Lord. <laughs> there you go. When you're having a sickness or a bad day going on in your life and somebody just walks up and says, man, I, I, I was told, I just want to pray for you. Look, do you understand what God is doing? Everything should be given to him. When a doctor locates your, 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 your problem or your situation and helps you back to health, you thank him or her, but you give all honor and glory to the one who is the source. So while we may thank vessels, people who who God uses, we thank them moderately, the true praises should be directed back to God, back to the source. Not moderately, but with excitement. Not moderately, but with admiration, appreciation, love. Because when you do that, that's spiritual. That's what we talk about when we say be spiritual. You understand that God used that person as a vessel, but you understand the true source that deserves all praise, all glory and honor. You don't have to wait till you get back to work. You don't have to wait till you go back to the doctor. You can get on your knees right then and take that sanctuary and praise God and lift up praises and honor him and thank him and worship him. And you can do all those things immediately when he provides for you. Ephesians 1, Verse 3 says this, write this down. It says this, it says, Praise be to God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. Do you realize you have access to every spiritual blessing? God has given you that through Jesus Christ. When we bow before God, we, we worship him. And we do that because he is God. And so, you, you, you know, I, I, I used to have those questions. Why, why do we do this? Why do we do that? Why do we do this? And God didn't know that to me. But now I understand the reason I bow is because he is God. Mm -hmm. The reason I lift my hands is because he is worthy of me lifting my hands. The reason I praise him and lay down on my face sometimes and cry to him is because he is worthy of my tears. Amen. We bow before him because he is God. We thank him with Zamar singing praise because he is God. You ever just been in your car, no music on, and sang a song that you didn't even know existed? You ever just sang hymns and prayed to God and thanked him for who he is and what he's done? You ever just came up with a tune and just thanked God for, for just being God? Has anybody ever experienced that Zamar praise before the Lord? You just sing the hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And so we thank him with Zamar singing praise. We thank him with the Yada confession. Lord, you are worthy. You are honored. You are awesome. I thank you for all that you do. We thank him and praise him with a shout of hallelujah because he's God. Not because he took care of your bills. Not because he's helped you with a family member. All that stuff's great. But the true praise he deserves is because he's God. He has the power to do those things. He has the authority to help you in your situation. 
He has the, the wisdom to, to take care of your situations. So we shout praise and uh, we, we say praise the Lord and hallelujah because he's God. And that's enough. He's enough. He's all you need. He doesn't have to earn your praise. It belongs to him. That's what the scripture says. It belongs to God. You know, when you praise God, you've taken praise from his ownership of praise and given it back to him. Do you understand what you've just done? When you say, oh, thank you, Lord, that thank you was given from heaven to you for you to give back up to who it was due to. He has to loan you praise in order for you to spiritually connect to him. When you cry out to God, he loans you that so that you can spiritually connect. He loaned us his son so that we can have him forever. Amen. Exodus, I want you to write this down, Exodus 3. 13 and 14. Sometimes we get confused. Sometimes we get confused and thrown in different directions of who God is. Sometimes we think He owes us all these things and we need explanations and we need to do things according to what, uh, what we want and we just trust Him. But the reality of this is He is deserving without us doing anything. Exodus 3, 13 and 14. Let's read this. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? <laughs> so he's going to God and saying, God, I know you sent me. I know you sent me over this way. But I have some questions. If, if I go over there, they may ask who sent me. And so what do I tell them? God says to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Sometimes we act like an equal to God. Sometimes we feel we need to be explained to, but sometimes you just got to listen. If God says step, you step. If he says get up and pray, you get up and pray. You don't have to ask him who about or what to pray about. If he says pray, trust that he will give you all that you need when you're in the midst of your prayer. Sometimes we act like we are equal and think we are entitled to every explanation, and that's not true. We're not entitled to all of that. But we have access to all the answers. We have access to all authority through Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, through God the Father and the Holy Spirit. We have access. So we don't need to want to, 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 to wanna know everything. But through the one who loves us and who adores us and who allows us to worship him, he's given us all three things. So we always act entitled on things sometimes. We gotta get away from that. We just trust God for being God. Sometimes when we feel we need to question God and ask, well, why do you tell us to do this thing? And if you're saying, Lord, do you really need to know why? God supplies you with a dollar and then requests 10 cents back on that dollar. <laughs> we act entitled asking why does he need the 10 cents? <laughs> But fail to ask, why is he leaving us 90 cents? Right. Amen. Has anybody ever asked that? Right. <laughs> 90 cents of a dollar that he completely owns. Amen. Why don't we ask that? Why do we feel so entitled to ask what he's doing with the 10 cents instead of asking why he's giving us 90 cents? It's all his. He's saying, I'm giving you 90 cents. I need you to give me 10 cents back. We say, why do I give you 10 cents back? Well, because 10 cent wasn't yours in the first place. 90 cent was yours. Oh, family, we're getting deep in here today. Your money belongs to God. Do you understand? So let's take the your off of it and say the money you receive belongs to God. And we get caught up in saying, well, if we give 10 cent back, he'll bless us and give us a... Look, it don't matter. If he says give 10 cent back on a dollar that he's given you, you give 10 cent back. 
Why argue with him? He's God. He knows what he's going to do with everything that you have. You've got to trust him with everything that he gives you and everything he supplies you with. Your money belongs to God. Your worship belongs to God. You, your hallelujah belongs to God. Why is that? He deserves it. Because he deserves it. Why does he deserve it? Not because of anything he's done to you, but because he's all powerful. He's God. Family, you cannot give God more than he deserves because he owns it all. So why are we worried about 10 cents? Why do we stress over that? If he said, give us 50 cents, give me 50 cents. I need you to give me 50 cents this week on every dollar. Okay, God. It's yours. What did Abraham do when God told him to sacrifice his son? He knew what God said before. He said, I don't know why he's telling me to kill my son. He must be going to bring him back to life. Because he promised me that my children would be numerous. Faith, family. It just, it just works on faith. You cannot give God more than he deserves because he owns it all. You can't praise him too much. You can't worship him too much. Some of you are like, well, I, every week I get down on my knees or I come up for prayer or I do that. I think I'm doing that too much. I think everybody's looking at me. You're not worried about everybody. Get your praise on. God is looking at you. That's all that matters. Why are you worried about who says anything about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis with the Lord? Yeah. All praises, all glory goes to him. Don't worry about the people around you. Give all honor to God. Yeah. He deserves it. You can't give him too much. The heart of true praise is because he is worthy. He is worthy because he is God. If he asks for 13 cents, you give him 13 cents. If he asks for 15 cents, you give him 15 cents. If he tells you to sow your whole check, you sow your whole check. Not because you're looking for something in return, but because he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the source of all authority. You give him praise, glory, and honor because he deserves it. and trying to figure it all out and just walk on faith and trust God. Amen. That's what we're going to do as a ministry. We're going to trust God. God doesn't need a resume. God, can I have your resume before I give you this 10 cent? <laughs> You've asked for an increase of 13 cent. I'm going to need a resume. You know, proof of income. <laughs> I'm going to need all this stuff from you, Lord, before I can uh, do that. God doesn't need a qualification. He doesn't have references. Who's his references? Well, my reference is the Son and the Holy Spirit. Who's Jesus' reference? Well, the Father and the Holy I mean, what, what references do you need? What has he done in your life? He's given you breath. He's allowed you to understand that he exists. You know without a doubt that God is in, in existence. You know that he never leaves you, and yet you ask him on a dollar that he's giving you 90 cents of. Why he wants 10%. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Because I've done the same thing, just as guilty. But I'm saying, he doesn't need a resume. He doesn't need a qualification period or anything like that. He doesn't, you don't need references from God. If I am says to praise him, I am deserves your praise. If I am says to worship him, I am deserves your worship. If he says to lay down on your face, I am deserves your laying down. If he says to get down on your knees, I am wants you to get down, you get down on your knees. If he says to talk to this person, I am is telling you, you talk to that person. If he says take that person food, you don't check and see if they need food. You take them food because I am said to take them food. If he tells you to get up at three in the morning and pray, you don't ask him why, you just get up and pray because I am said to get up and pray. The source tells you to do things. You just simply do it. Not because you are who you are, but
but because he is who he is. He is the author and the finisher of your faith, the great I am, the, the one who's worthy of your praise. So if he tells you to praise him, you give him praise. Man. Stop getting caught up in all that other stuff. We're not equal to God. We're not entitled to all this stuff. He gives us what he wants to give us, give us when he wants to give it to us. So we just trust him. Speaking to myself also. We just trust him. Because the, the, the heart of true praise is giving the source all the praise. Thanking everybody else but give them the source of praise. If you've been blessed this morning, I need you to stand and give God true praise. Amen.